what is the point, the critical point in the generator when uh, you try to install a generator? Gotta be above the water line. That point, the point where the, 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 the smoke and the salt water, the point where the smoke and the salt water is mixed together. Pay attention, suppose, suppose, look, this is the, this is the point of, a, of a, the critical point. Pay attention. Suppose that uh, when I decide to install the generator in that area, I need to identify that area is located below the water line or over the water line. If it's located below the water line, that means what? Like an that uh, the raw water here, I have permanent raw water here and probably here. And uh, during the cranking, it's easy that I suction water. Oh, ah, yeah. uh, okay. If I have raw water here, I need, yeah. I need move it this with the face up and install an anti-siphon device to avoid that the water enter here. The water need moves all of this, and that's that's impossible. Now I am going to explain in other generator that situation. One second. Let me repeat here. Let me repeat here. The raw water. The raw water enter here. Look, this is the heat exchanger, and this is the exhaust manifold in the bottom. The gases, 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 gases. I have gases here, and this is the exhaust pipe. And here, I have the heat exchanger. Raw water entering here, and the raw water goes out here and enter here. No? That's clear? Okay, if this point is below the water line, I need that this hose goes up, and go here to avoid that situation. Ready, guys? Like the critical water. point is the point where the water is mixed with the gases. Okay, yeah. you enjoyed this explanation, guys? Yeah, yeah. Any question about this? Is clear why the enemy is that point? Uh, I explained that uh, in a typical engine, you have more than one heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. One heat exchanger for the coolant, other for the radiator, uh, motor oil, for the transmission oil, for uh, uh, the power steering fluid, for uh, the fuel, for the air. What is the name of the, the heat exchanger for the air? Air intake or something? It's an intercooler later we are going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Okay, look at this. Look at this heat exchanger. This is the situation. Look, the coolant. Uh, thank you, Danny, for this. The coolant enter here, circulate here, and the coolant continue over there. This is for coolant. Uh, excuse me, this is for transmission oil. And uh, look at internally what happened with the salt water. You see, the salt water passed through the pipes, guys. You see, through those pipes. But uh, the, the liquid, the refrigerant or motor oil, touched the, the, the salt water? No, no. no the, salt, the refrigerant passed around those pipes. In other words, the salt water never touched that liquid, that fluid. It's gonna be the same thing in AC. Okay. Uh, how many heat exchangers I mentioned before? Five. Five, five or six, six no? Yeah. There are heat exchangers combined. Look, in between this and this, I have one heat exchanger mm. for fuel, and other heat exchanger for motor oil, and other here for transmission. Uh, there are some of these with five components, yeah. or, or three or two, you see? Do they do that to only have to run one seacock for the whole system? Uh, correct, and you have one flow of raw water here, yeah. and, the ro and, and you have yeah. the same seacock for all of them. Good, guys? Later in the course of this, we are going to study with more detail. And uh, this one, this one is the heat exchanger for, for, uh, for Timboar gasoline engine. Look at this, look at this. The exhaust in the middle, exhaust gases in the middle, and raw water here. You see? <laughs> When the exhaust enter here and the raw water enter here, now this is the output. Gases in the middle and raw water here and here in the bottom. You see? Raw water here, gases here, and the hose is over there. Mm. And this is why in the exhaust pipe you have gases mixed with water. This, this is a good, that one's in good shape. <laughs> this, yeah. This <laughs> is, this is located. Uh, 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 Danny, can you show uh, in that engine? Check with Danny, the heat oh, exchanger. Yeah. So the, the same the same exhaust is showing you, this engine has an extension. Why would they put an extension on that? A riser? Yeah, why would they put a riser extension? Because the motor's below the water line. The exhaust is below the water line. So in order for them to compensate, because if the, if the exhaust is below the water line, water will be ingesting the engine. 
So this is a three inch, they have up to six inches. It all depends on the boat, okay? Same thing, it looks exactly what you just saw there. It's got the exhaust in the middle, water passages, and all the water passages come out here. This is a common thing that you'll be replacing. These last only about three to five years. The Makes more you use it, the longer they last. The less you use it, the, lower, the shorter lifespan that it has. Why? Because it sits and corrodes. And yeah, the water turns so acidic long. over a period of time. This is cast iron. It'll swell up. It'll eat the walls. Dude, like this one bad. here, this engine was locked up because I got water because the exhaust. If you see water leaking on the outside, more than likely it's leaking on the inside. And this is what you call the silent killer. So when the engine's running, you don't feel it as much. You won't feel it unless it's really a bad case. But if the boat, you shut the boat down, you leave, whatever exhaust valve is stuck open with the engine off, mm -hmm. if that water is in that cylinder, you're loading up the cylinders with water. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go the next day to go use it, clunk, and it's done. Uh, That's why every three to five years you have three places. And these are the ones, these are the old versions. They have the ones now that have the catalyst in them. That's the newer versions. But any questions on that?